hello guys so welcome to my tutorial on hyperledger fabric in this tutorial series i am going to walk you through different steps involved in the development of a healthcare domain use case utilizing hyperledger fabric this is just a poc here we are going to see how patient informations and other confidential or private data are shared between the registered organizations based on the policy definition listing even though our core focus is on hyperledger fabric i will take you through other tools and technologies that are also necessary for an end to end workflow development i have not included the procedures to set up any software as there are plenty of sites available clearly explaining the steps to follow another assumption i have made is that you have some basic understanding about blockchain and have gone through the hyperledger fabric official site to do some setup and hands on development if not i strongly recommend you to visit the site and it is very important to understand many terminologies and definitions this is the official documentation of hyperledger fabric to understand everything about the hyperledger fabric blockchain so the you have to go to, to this uh, getting started uh, to download uh, the samples and uh, binaries so here you can go through the instructions to download samples docker images and binaries because we are going to use all these uh, binaries to build our blockchain application let's have a quick overview of the tools and technologies used to build this application so these are all the list of uh, tools or technologies uh, which we are using to build the end-to-end -end application the first one is uh, hyperledger fabric since this tutorial is uh, about hyperledger fabric uh, we will deep dive into every aspects of hyperledger fabric in the coming sessions second is uh, docker compose docker is used to deliver software in packages called co containers Docker enables you to separate your applications uh, from your infrastructure so you can deliver software quickly. Compose is a tool for defining and running multi-container Docker applications. With the Compose, uh, you use YAML file to configure application services. Then with a single command, uh, we can create and start all the services from the configuration. Here we are using uh, public dockers for certificate authority couch db and uh, fabric peer and orderer setup let me quickly open my studio uh, code editor visual studio code to show you the docker compose files these are the docker compose files we are using to host docker images for different services this one that certificate authority uh, we are using fabric ca this a uh, public hyperledger image for all the organizations uh, we here we are using for organizations and uh, because everything is set up on the local host uh, all the certificate authorities are same only different cities it is exposed the services are exposed in different ports if it was in a production, uh, the scenario would be a little different. There, there, the certificate authorities can be different for different organizations. It is not necessary that the same certificate authority will be there for all organizations participating in the blockchain. Uh, this is uh, for uh, CouchDB, the state server for different organization here also the same images are used for uh, couch db fabric couch db uh, this is uh, for setting up orderer as well as peer the image used is uh, fabric orderer for orderer service and uh, fabric peer for uh, peer services so these are all the images which we used to build our application. CouchDB is an open source document oriented NoSQL database. 
CouchDB allows you to store data in JSON format. Issue JSON queries against your data and use indexes to support your queries. CouchDB is used as the external state database for Hyperledger Fabric. Next is uh, Node.js. This is an open source uh, cross-platform backend JavaScript runtime environment that runs on the V8 engine and executes JavaScript code outside a web browser. You might be knowing that the V8 engine is used in the Chrome browser to execute JavaScript code. Node.js runtime environment has been built by removing browser specific libraries and adding libraries required to perform server side operations. In our application context, Node.js is used to provide API to interact with the Hyperledger Fabric blockchain. It will perform the first level of user authentication and act as a gateway to the Fabric smart contracts. Next is uh, React.js. This uh, framework has been used to build client application web interface. You can use any JavaScript framework of your choice to develop client applications. Uh, the last one is IPFS, Interplanetary File System. This is a peer-to-peer -peer storage network for storing and sharing data in distributed file system. Content is accessible through peers located anywhere in the world. Storing files in the blockchain is very expensive that will completely slow down the network which is not at all desirable. That's why we are using IPFS, an external storage system. IPFS knows how to find what you ask for using its content address rather than its location. IPFS is uh, not using URL to locate the file, but instead of URL, it is using content address because it's a distributed file system. If you are not familiar with any of these uh, tools and technologies, I would recommend you to go through the documentations to have a better understanding before proceed further. Here is the outline of our Hyperledger Fabric solution which we are going to build. The responsibility of blockchain operator things like uh, create the certificates, create channel, add organizations, deploy chain code, etc. And uh, here is our Hyperledger Fabric blockchain and there are smart contract built inside this uh, blockchain. Node.js uh, server application will invoke the smart contract deployed on the blockchain and uh, the web application client interface react.js web application will invoke the APIs exposed by this Node.js server application. This is our private blockchain consortium comprising of four organizations and uh, one ordering service. The organizations are hospital, laboratory, pharmacy and insurance provider. I am not going to uh, deep dive into each in individual components because in the uh, coming tutorials we will be discussing and implementing each components in detail. Before we wind up this introduction video, let me show you the fabric healthcare network which we are going to build in this tutorial series. Using npm start command, I am starting the client application built in react.js. By default, uh, it will open in localhost port number uh, 3000. As we are deploying the blockchain and all associated services in the same local server, there are some additional functional functionalities being added to manipulate the real world scenario which may not be applicable in production environment. This user sign up button has been provided to enroll a new user to access the blockchain network for any of the four registered organizations. This is a common page built for all the four organizations. In the production scenario, there will be individual applications running for each organization. This is just to mimic user enrollment process for the organizations. Entering an email ID.
password again password last name select the organization from the list i am selecting hospital uh, uh, and the role as a doctor click on sign up uh, this user has been registered and enrolled successfully we are using json web token jwt for authorization let me explain how does it work when you register and enroll a new user to the private blockchain network a certificate will be issued by the organization's registered certificate authority for the user and stored in the wallet this certificate contain the user's private key msp information certificate type and version upon successful user registration a json web token is created by the node js application user authentication is done by the msp using client certificate and public key that happens inside the blockchain network but jwt is created from the node server component outside the network this web token is used to authorize the user for subsequent requests this uh, jwt token is expired after uh, defined time period we can set the time period when it expire i have given this uh, generate token button to create a new json web token at uh, after the token expiry you need to select an organization and enter registered email address to generate a new web token if you enter an email id which is not registered for the selected organization you will get an error message after validating it you can see this error message is throwing i am entering the registered email id to generate the token there are different ways to store the token securely for this poc i have used a local storage to save jwt token now you can see the patient records by click on patient records button these are the patients added while initializing uh, the chain code after deployment click on the record will open the medical reports listing page as there is no report added to this patient the table is showing empty to add a new test report click on the add report button enter the details here and to upload a document or any file use this uh, browse button to select a file click on the save report uh, will save the details into blockchain network and uh, mongodb state db the attached file will be uploaded to ipfs storage network and the returned hash value will be stored in the blockchain to retrieve the file from ipfs here i am treating these health record and file attachments as private data and hence we can set policies to enforce access right to these data for the organizations whichever organizations have access to a particular set of data in blockchain can only view the records and finally let's add a patient record to the blockchain Let me open the CouchDB database to see the records inserted. I 
I hope you enjoyed this video and got a clear picture about the scope of this training series. See you guys in the next video. Thank you.